You have to do the old fashioned handshake then, I think. Uh oh. The signature. Perfect. Right on. I love it. <sighs> we got a big day tomorrow, buddy. Yeah, tomorrow's a bigger day than today. We got Robbie loaded up, strapped. It's hardly raining. Eight here, ten up front. My mom's waiting. I'd say this is going to be a success. Ohio egg. Today's a pretty big day, so I got my big day hat on. We have Olivia. Olivia, who are you? Hi, I'm Olivia. I'm a sales rep with Ohio Ag Equipment. Is the angle right? I can't see. Heck yeah. Oh, sweet. <laughs> so today's a big day for you too, right? It is. Why is it big? Yeah, so this is my first sale. That's huge. It is. I'm so excited. And what is it? So this is the Massey Ferguson. It's a 2270 XD, so it's a high density baler. So it's not the fence? Not yet. Uh, <laughs> Sweet. Was yeah. this a particularly hard sale? Was my dad a tough client? I wouldn't say tough. I would say he knows what he's sure. he knows what he wants yeah, and that he sounds knows about what right. he's gonna end up with. Yeah. So I think it's a great first interaction. You can be honest, he's hard to deal with sometimes. <laughs> uh oh, you're gonna get me in trouble over here. <laughs> Is there anything special about this baler? There are a lot of really cool things about this baler actually. Yeah. So the knife bar actually comes all the way out. Okay. So that basket like all the way out to change. Let's check it out. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, Did you give us twine? Yes. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah, we've got twine in here. Yeah, they're tough. It takes some real beef to open these it up. It does. I was like, I feel like it's combine season. Oh, yeah. So these just pop down. These are magnetic. We got some to start. Okay. Yeah. There we go. So we got those to start. And then it's really cool to see so we can walk through which leads to your front and then yeah, your back. Right, right. I've had to restring them. They're not that fun, but this yeah. is a very nice, very nice chart. Yeah. Super nice for the grease fittings. Yes, Huge. absolutely. And then you've got your, your oil here and then yep. you got it back here too. So you've got doubles. And then you've got hydraulic brakes. It's a tandem. Yeah. You've got everything extra on your back wheels. Huge. Um, the back wheels steer. Yes. Huge. Yeah, that was nice. I got to walk through and learn all about that this morning. So how long have you been at uh, Ohio Ag? So I've been with Ohio Ag since September, nice. and then I moved into sales about a month and a half ago. Cool. Okay. So Where were you before? Yeah. So I was the admin assistant to the general manager up at headquarters. Oh, okay. Cool. Nice. Yeah. But I've been an ag my whole life, yeah. so I knew that I wanted to be. So Miller Farms Custom LLC Farming Insider is your first sale. It is. We'll get the jack down. It's got a hydraulic jack. Yeah. Holy cow. Oh, is my quick remote here? Uh, is it so you're, you're, yeah, brown. Yep. Brown? Wow, that's really something. You definitely got power to it. Yeah. You got to turn the flow up at all? Uh, you got to turn the flow up? Oh, Let's get this on the other color green. The right green. <laughs> That jack, I don't want to be near that all the time. The sound? There we go, the first sales agreement. Hopefully we can't see anything. Sign sealed, yeah right, we gotta put our shield up. Beautiful. Yeah. They have to do the old fashioned handshake then I think. Uh oh. The signature. Perfect. Right on. I love it. Life is a little bit of trial and error. We're gonna give it, give it a little bit more of a go tomorrow. The string that came with the baler, they put in 450 knot strength, and we need 550 for these uh, tough straw bales. But have we done a pressure calibration? No, I've never done one of those. Because as tight as this is, I mean that is. I I've never. It, it is let off on our baler. I know we yeah. ramp. You see this really ramp up. Yeah, I've never done a pressure. Maybe the text will do it. I got it on zero. Yep. So we did successfully tie a bale. We had some knots miss. We had to adjust the PTO driveline angle, but now we just diagnosed that it's the wrong string and we'll get after it tomorrow. What do you got to say about that, Don? What? <laughs> Any of it. I don't know. <laughs> Give us your best Carl. Carl. JP. <laughs> <laughs> Don walked behind the baler and called me JP and I thought it was Carl. Oh, well, new project. You might have to run it tomorrow, Rob. 
Oh, I'll take up the bat when the techs come out. Oh, <sighs> we got a big day tomorrow, buddy. Yeah, tomorrow's a bigger day than today. If there's one thing I don't think the general public knows about us farmers, is just the amount of big days that we have. So I have big day hat number two on. I actually have about three big day hats and my big day tennis shoes because last night was a big day, right? We got in a new baler, got it set up. Wasn't, we weren't very successful that night, but it still, still makes for a decent sized day. Today it's huge. Today we are taking the tried and true dialed in 2270, the slightly bigger 8370R. We are going to large square some Timothy. We have 78 acres of Timothy hay down. Carl was up there tedding and then he's gonna get in the rake. I'm gonna follow him with the baler. It is just me and Carl right now on 78 acres, which is, that's a big day in and of itself. I mean, that's a lot to do for two people. So we're gonna see what we can do. I got the baler serviced, greased, all the fluids in it that it needs. I, we put hydraulic oil and it lubricates the chains and things like that. I carry, I think at least 10 bags of Silo King up on top of the baler. That was my morning workout. That took a lot of effort. I think they might say they're 40 pounds, but by the 10th one up the ladder on the back end, they feel like 60 or 70 pounds. The hope is today's Tuesday. The hope is it won't rain until like, uh, the hope is it won't rain until about Wednesday afternoon. So Carl and I are just gonna try to bail this and pick up tonight and tomorrow, put it away. I think it's gonna be kind of funny because I think we're going to be literally storing the hay underneath the Amish as they're finishing up the roof. Cause we're out of room. Carl got started raking. I'm out here feeling it. It feels pretty good, it feels pretty dry. I'm going to let him just get a little bit further ahead of me. I don't wanna risk any incidences, you know? I'm not paying attention, Carl's not paying attention. We hit him. We hit, he's in a small tractor, I'd probably win. So I'll just let him get some time. This still is pretty good color, crunchy. You can tell just by the sound of that, if you've been watching our channel, that it's dry. So I'm gonna throw the drone up, film Carl for a little bit. Just let that last little bit of wind get the moisture out of these windrows and hammer down. It's gonna be a great day. We're really happy. This is mostly pure Timothy, a little bit of volunteer, well, not volunteer. We thought was failed orchard grass, but apparently it didn't fail. It just came up two and a half years later. Um, the regrowth is pretty, pretty solid. We don't usually get a very decent second cutting of Timothy. So we can get this cleaned up, get some nitrogen slammed on here, fix some of the ruts that happened when we originally made this field. Uh, we got a big rain and it washed out when the dirt was loose. Fix that and we could have ourselves some really productive, profitable acres here. Throw the drone up, get after it. I'm telling you, this is like the start of the big day. I'm gonna let Carl finish that little swath. And now there ain't nothing to it but to do it. I couldn't get the uh, baler to come up, which uh, was really unfortunate. And I shut the tractor on and off and I was trying to mess with things and think of stuff in my head. Then I went back there and checked and it's like the ISO wasn't even plugged in. So, you know, that just happens at times. Stuff like that. Okay, so I got my Baylor load screen up here. I'm gonna start at 135. Definitely gonna crank that up and I'm just gonna make sure things go okay. The moisture, that's not accurate yet. We'll start reading it, our scale. Um, we'll get going. The back axle's locked, so I wanna get going and I can't remember which remote that is. I just toggled the remote and it should, it should uh, open that up. I'm gonna mess with some of these flows too. So number one is not even my pickup, so that's, we'll cross that off. That's kind of opposite of what we want, but uh, we're just gonna deal with it. Actually, no. I gotta fix that, I'm gonna put that in float. Turn that. Whatever that is, I don't want it in constant. Bunch of BS, we'll get rolling here. So I was going for my first Diet Coke of the day and I forgot that I dropped it earlier and I opened it up and it soaked my hay dudes. So now I got wet socks like I stepped on like the wet bathroom floor after a shower. But anyways, we're rolling. The highest our moisture meter read was uh, 14%. I'm still putting preservative on because I'm, I'm crazy. But uh, we're gonna go check it with our Delmhurst moisture sensor. And uh, when I press that check button, it goes to 20, it means it's working. So we'll make sure these bales look good and um, make sure they are testing in congruency and 
they're complementing the moisture meter that What I was trying to say is we'll make sure they match what the moisture meter that the mass is reading is saying. So we're spitting out some bales. 9%. 9%. The large square baler moisture meter does typically read higher than the Delmhurst. I don't know if I like that or not, and I don't even know which one's technically accurate. Then when we go to take feed tests, that usually pulls a moisture meter or moisture sample as well. But the feed test readings are always super low, so I don't know what's going on. But it, what's most important to me is it passed the twist test, which means I grabbed about an inch diameter, rung it around, and it broke apart in two tip, two twists. 10, 11, 6, dry. That's not bad looking stuff, honestly. Strings are tight. That's about an 1163 pound bale. Pass the kick test. The kick test is if you kick it, does it hurt? In these stupid shoes, it did hurt. So let's get rolling, people. Let's hammer down. I really like the blue twine. I think it makes the bales look awesome. Now I've seen some guys running uh, pink and purple twine for the ladies. That's pretty cool. I got some help today uh, when I came to the, when I came to the field this morning. There was a truck that I didn't recognize in here. And it was a local guy with uh, a herd of cattle that wanted to bale some hay. I don't really like giving hay up out of the field because I'm already here. It's not like it's that much more effort to bale any less. So I don't like discounting the price. But uh, we came to an agreement and he's going to bale up the outside rounds over there and along the woods lines. So I don't have to worry about any type of moisture. Looks like he has a New Holland 4x4 baler and he's, he's hammering down. What, I, what I'm not in love with is it doesn't seem like his pickup is uh, cleaning up the rows very well. I think our wind rows are a little bit too big, but uh, he's getting it down. I just hope he goes back over. I don't know if the camera shows there's some leftover behind his bales and stuff. But he was a nice guy and he asked, so hey, less that we have to clean up. It's not like we have a ton of people available right now. We got people in wheat fields, baling straw, doing this. My mom, the champion that she is didn't have work today and uh, she hopped in the JCB, the Jitney, and she is stacking hay up. I'm gonna have to call her and yell though. She's only putting too high. I'm not gonna yell, but I will call her and say we need stacks of three. That's the most efficient way for us to stack. But she's doing pretty good. So just hop in anything and get going. Things are going well. Just following. So basically what I'm doing is I'm making sure that my moisture, or my uh, preservative is on over here. Don't need it, but uh, put it on anyways. This is all for the horse market. This arrow up here tells me that I need to be driving to the left or to the right to make a nice even bale. So I just occasionally glance down at that and make sure I'm giving the machine what she wants on which side that she wants it. And this is a lot of hay out here. This is making a lot more hay than I think any of us thought. We're going to spend a lot of time picking this up. Here's a washout that we are hoping to fix here. You might have been able to see some in the drone video. They're not terribly wide, so we think we're going to run like a rototiller on both sides, make it so it's like a passable drop, seed it with some quick grabbing like clover and oats or something so it holds the ground and then also throw some Timothy in there. And then if we have to come in and spray with like 2,4-D or something to kill off the broad leaves, which would be the clover, we can do that. And then we should just have Timothy that seeds itself in like a natural waterway. I really never thought I'd say it, but everyone is having a big day. My mom over there, she's nearly keeping up with me. She's having a huge day. She's got them all lined up in stacks of three, which is perfect. That's how we'll load the trailer. Carl is well established and ahead of me. I am not catching him, I just moved on to this part of the field. Uh, this farm, I guess you would call it, is pretty much five pieces. Uh, two smaller pieces up in the woods, then one up by the road, then there's a lane that I crossed over, and then there's these two pieces that have like a, a big waterway swale that divides them. And that first piece up there, I got 113 bales. It is 323, so we're having a heck of a good day. The round baler guy is doing a nice job on the outside rounds. He is missing a considerable amount, 
but he's going back through and cleaning them up. I don't know if he intended on that. It's taking him a little more time, I guess, but hey is hey, so. Uh, Carl is doing a great job. I tried to sneak in here and clean up the fourth or fifth inside round for him. That's what I'm trying to do so he can turn easier, but obviously he was done at this end, so. I went over there and cleaned it up for him when he starts open. He's got that field all opened up. So that should make his life a pinch easier. Carl's probably about half done raking this entire farm. And we're hammering down. Our moisture is at 10%, 9%. We're spitting out between like 1,100 and 1,200 pound bales. Two and a quarter inch flake size. That's industry standard, about 35 to 42 flakes per bale. We're 90 inches long. They'll slide right into Boxman if we want them to. Things are going good. Uh, I imagine the next time I pick up the camera, it'll be because something's not going so good. So we're going to hold out. We're going to keep hammering down until something breaks. And it will. I bet I'll miss a knot or something stupid. Still got the preservative on? All good. There's my mom having a huge day. I, she doesn't have a huge day hat on, which is troubling. I don't think she's ever drove that machine. And here she is squaring up three bales beautifully. Now I will take some credit. Those are three beautiful bales to square up. If they weren't that uniform, her job would be not as easy. So, but she's doing a really good job. So I, I just ran out of preservative. I have done 151 bales in 2.4 hours. I'm trying to put about one pound a ton of this Silo King dry hay on. I'd have to do the math, but I'm pretty sure that's close enough. I think I put like, there's probably four and a half bags in there. So that would have been like 170-ish ton or something that I could have done or could have put in there. So yeah, we're, we're on spot, we're on target. Here's my stockpile up here. Pop the top here. Oh yeah, just running out, good timing. Take some of these, dump it in here and we'll be good to go again. bad mouth the guy because some of you guys might recognize who it is if you're local but I'm sort of in disbelief he cleaned up by the road and this is how he left the outside rounds of the field I mean all the way around his tire tracks missed the entire windrow and uh, just pulled out of the field and is leaving it I don't really have time to be going over what he already did hardly getting hay but cleaning up the field it's not really something I thought anyone would do. I thought you'd just clean up when you tried to bail. That much hay left in the ground will totally kill the seating underneath it. And I'm not even gonna be able to get it all without moving his round bales out of the way. Just so you guys can see, I'm not crazy. Just basically a tiny second cutting wind rope all the way around. Should have just let it go and focused on the other stuff because it's gonna rain but it man it was just i like to see the field complete not not complete unfinished i had to i have to clean this up now i apologize if i overreacted for the outside rounds we just try to be stewards of the land and make the final product look very good especially because this is rented ground so i got fired up but anyways reinforcements are here thank you mom she had to go to a very important dinner so let's let's wish mother dear good luck tonight Carl was done raking. Justin showed up. He took over in the Jitney with the semi. They're loading up. And I am going over. I mean, I am just so hyped with what I'm about to show you guys. I'll be there in about I'll be there in about 20 seconds. You'll see what I'm talking about. This has kind of been a little bit of a dream for well, ever since we got a little bit bigger and hey, to do this with our own equipment has been well a dream. I just said it, I'll repeat it. So here we go. Stay tuned. Man, it's like a baler's already been here. I don't remember making any. Remember making any square bales over here? That's because I never did come over here. Robbie made it into town. 
with the other 2270 XD. We are running twin balers. He got the applicator put on this morning, putting Silo King down, hopefully at the same rate. Uh, the one thing that baler doesn't have that mine does is the electric length adjustment or the electric knotter trip. So he has it set at hopefully close to 85 inches, 90 inches, something that I'm running at. And uh, I'm just so excited to run next to him. Oh, what the heck? My differential was on. It ruined the whole tape. You know, as soon as your differential's on, because you go to turn it, the tractor just doesn't turn. I probably tore up the field too. Oh well. My excitement is uh, my excitement's still at an all-time high. That is some Pickworth straw right there. It's gonna take some musical trailers for him to ever see that bale back. And I'm assuming we'll go back to his place and bale straw and we'll probably lose a bale and a half of Timothy. That's kind of how it works. Nice looking straw though. I mean, I'll take it. That's real golden. I'm gonna try to catch him. He's, he's a novice in the large square, okay? He doesn't have quite as many knots tied as I do, so I might be able to catch up to him. He's also in a smaller tractor. He's in a 7260, and quite honestly, that's that's about as small as you want to go with these large 3x4 uh, extra density, high density balers. I mean, it takes a lot of power. You can really feel that plunge. We're caught up. We'll get a sweet shot. Very nice. We noticed that Robbie's pickup needs to go down a little more. He's leaving some hay where he crosses. So we're just gonna put it. We gotta adjust the whole wheel, Rob? Yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's not firm now, but I just gotta take it down a little bit. Yeah, it was probably fine in straw that was six inches tall. Yeah, it was. This is exciting. I'm gonna put the drone up in the air. I feel like when you're a kid and your buddy gets the same cooperative video game with you, you guys are just ready to hammer down. All right, and then uh, we just putting this in the new barn then? Yeah, that's that's the only spot we got to put it. Okay. Okay, all right. Goodbye. Bye. Phone never stops, that was PJ. This is one of the coolest situations I've ever been in farming, following following our large baler. I mean, we're, we're putting away like so many tons a minute, or, uh, so many tons an hour. I can't get the drone working that well. I can't do the actual baler and machine justice by driving it, but there'll be some back and forth. I'm sure we can edit in there. But for now, we'll play the game of Fall of the Leader. day the guys have done a great job I would say 70% of the bales are stacked up in stacks of three even clumped together in 9 12 or like 15 bundles we hammered it out Robbie's actually finished me up the last one row so I lied shut off the preservative I broke down for a little bit it kept telling me 261 hydraulic system fault so I have to dig into what that means. I shut the tractor down, let it, re let it sit for a little bit, and it hasn't uh, came back up, so it could just be a computer error. We will have a busy remainder of the night cleaning these up. Looks like the rain is gonna hold off, which is awesome, but also kind of a bummer, because we would have had a little bit of maybe second cutting alfalfa done to bale tomorrow, but they were expecting rain by tonight for the past three days, so you can only do what you can do. So it looks like we'll clean up, Get these home maybe i'll show some action shots of us cleaning up and then looks like we'll move on to straw tomorrow straw 2023 in large squares we've got a 170 acre piece they got wind road ready for us um man try to do some of that before it rains together we're gonna get after it guys awesome day i sort of forgot the biggest part of this huge day we are stacking in the i would say 85% built new barn so we just couldn't wait anymore we're we're literally out of room I mean we could have shuffled some things aside but we wouldn't have fit this whole field in and we surely wouldn't have fit straw in tomorrow 
So we got the builder's permission. We're not gonna be technically in their way. This is not what we wanted here yet. We're going to grade this out and run drainage and all that fun stuff. But we're stacking it up, man. Looks like Justin is easily six high. First product in the new barn. This is all very temporary. So we wanted to make sure that we kept away from the door so the door builders can come in and put this on. We wanted to stay away from the outside so we could get in and backfill when the walls are in. And we wanted to stay away from the posts because that's kind of fresh dirt that we dug up and it's a little wet. We don't want to put, we don't want to put plastic over it. We would like for this to dry. So we're just going too wide and temporary, but I think it's going to work. We're going to be able to fit a lot of hay down this run. So we're happy with that. There's no dust yet. No. <laughs> yep. Right on. Get to the field, pick some more up. Hammer down. It's all coming together, the whole package. New barn, fill it with hay and straw. Get the rebaling set in here. We got the custom doors going on. We got some other custom things coming in, but that might not, that's probably about a four or five months away still. Here we are the next morning. As soon as I finish loading my mom up, we'll have already sent one, two, three, four, five trailers out this morning. It's not eight o'clock. There's a chance of rain here rolling in. I want to say at eight, but it looks like heavier stuff right around nine o'clock. So we should be able to get in and get this, this acreage cleaned up. We took a little over 140 bales home last night. So a couple more round robins and we should be just fine. Worst case scenario, I'll get them stacked up so only the top ones get significant rain. We'll go from there. Like I was saying, this field is multiple parts. So I got nine bales left here. I'm gonna go ahead and stack them up so only one of the nine would see significant rain. Looks like it's missing us. I don't know if it's missing the home farm, but it appears to be missing up here so far. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, huh? The rain is starting to hit. That's okay. The semi came from back there. We got a little bit more to put on that. I just saw the last trailer pull in. That'll finish off the field. These bales should be fine. We'll get them loaded up quick. And lo and behold, the round bales are still on the field. So that was overall just probably not a great decision on, on my part, but it is what it is. Hopefully it'll dry off before he comes and picks them up. We got Robbie loaded up, strapped. It's hardly raining. Eight here, 10 up front. My mom's waiting. I'd say this is gonna be a success. We'll see how my mom's goes. How about me soaking wet? The last bale's coming out as the rain's coming down. Of course, the round baler guy is still out there checking up the field. I'm gonna have to call him and tell him we're, we're done for the day. I'd say on all is a success, right, for us? What do you think, PJ? Kind of, kind of made it. Kind of made it. <laughs> we of, got a pretty good soaker, but the rest are pretty good. Yeah, we got what? Probably had to 130 in before we even got a dose. Oh, at right? least, yeah. At least. Are we in their way? <laughs> Probably. No? Okay. Success comes in all shapes and sizes. What do you think? <laughs> That's pretty close, buddy. Let me tell you. Hey, it wasn't... I don't think we ruined anything. I got wet. Yeah, you got wet. Nice stack, too. I was telling, I was, I was telling Freeman, did you ever have it where they were stacking A underneath? He goes, no, never, never before. <laughs> That back, we'd have been done if that back piece didn't have so much hay. That made hay. It made two loads back there. Hey, I told you that was stiff. You got anything for YouTube, Carl? Oh. No. Come on. I'm wet. I know, I'm wet too. It's time for a How shower. How did you get wet? I, I was strapping down. I mean, when it was wet, you probably didn't have to strap. The bales were probably never Yeah, they were pushing pretty hard. We need gutters, man. We're flooding. <laughs> 